Hello everyone, welcome to Amber Life. We are Devin and April and we have been living in a converted ambulance for a little over nine months now. So for this video, we're going to be sharing with you our story. We're going to be talking about how it came to be that we started living on, on the road and specifically why it, it was that we chose to live and convert an ambulance rather than doing something a little bit more mainstream, such as converting a van or perhaps buying an RV. It definitely wasn't a straightforward journey, I guess, um, to get to where we are today. And so we'll just uh, detail some of the, the key points and the key moments that led us to be at this particular moment. And so just follow along and yeah, here's, uh, here's our story. So the story really begins at around June of 2015. We had been married for five or six months at this point and we decided that we really wanted some experience um, traveling around the world. Prior to meeting Devin, I had done a lot of solo travel to places like Paraguay, um, Finland, Slovenia, various other places, wherever I could find a relatively cheap flight. And what I realized was that it was actually pretty easy to travel without spending a lot of money if you stayed at youth hostels and made a lot of your own food and took uh, public transit. And, and I also realized that there was this great program called WOOF, and it's this organic farming program. It stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. And WOOF is available in, I think, over 90 countries. It's a wonderful program because what you do is you arrange a homestay with a host family, and then you spend a few hours a day helping them out with, with their farming, whether it's weeding or tending to the chickens or what have you. And in exchange for that, they give you room and board. And it's a great way to travel really cheaply and to also get a really rich, um, cultural experience by staying with the host family. So it's a great program, um, definitely check it out, and it's a great way to get uh, farming skills too. So we decided that because the lease on our apartment was running out at the end of May, that we would leave June 1st, and we booked a one-way flight to Scotland. <laughs> so when it came time to leave, we got rid of a lot of our things. We put quite a few things into storage at, as well. We had a couple of friends with storage units with extra space and so we did that and stored some things with our, our parents as well and packed a, a couple of backpacks and just took off. And it was a really great experience. We ended up being gone for a little over 14 months, which is a lot longer than we thought that we would be able to be gone. And we ended up traveling all around Europe and Southern a Africa and also Southeast Throughout Asia. that experience, we realized that not only did we travel together really well, we had a very similar traveling style and sim similar temperament and similar needs. We also realized that there was a lot of the U.S. that we hadn't seen yet. So during our travels, we went to Laos and we went there to experience the culture and also to see some friends of ours which were living in the region of Pontevon. And one of the really interesting things about them is that they had been there for quite a few years. I think they, when we went to visit them, they had already been there for about eight or nine years. And the husband started a business a coffee business and this business supplied coffee plants to the local farmers and villagers so that they could grow them and provide the um, the fruits of those coffee plants to uh, to this gentleman so that they could process them and bring them to market and so by doing that he would supply or the, the business would supply a living wage to the farmers and uh, with this being said when we were spending time with this family the wife 
um, brought up the very fact of van life in the U.S. And we had previously not even heard of the term van life. And so it really piqued our interest in this lifestyle that was going on in the U.S. and throughout other parts of the world. And so we took this into our brains during our travels. And so we just started doing more research about van life and looked up on YouTube um, about different van lifers and how they were doing this and what they were living in and kind of like the logistical and the, the travel aspects of this. And so this brought us back to coming back to the U.S. We came back to the U.S. August of 2016. I went back to the previous job that I had before we left on our international travels and April found a job in a different field than she had previously been in and so we spent the next few years um, just saving as much money as we could doing a lot of research into different vehicles that we could build out and live in full time and just figuring out the the day-to-day -day logistics of how we could actually pull this off. So we spent the next few years working and mulling over the, the idea of possibly getting a vehicle that we could build out ourselves. We looked at different vans and we actually test drove a couple of Sprinter vans and what we found was that in the, in the Northeast, uh, because van life is not a very popular thing, at least compared to out West, it's actually very hard to find vans to build out. We test drove, as I said, we test drove a couple of Sprinter vans and overall found that many of them were really rusty and kind of overpriced for what they were. We also um, considered for a short time, we had a Subaru Outback that we had purchased and we were thinking about putting a rooftop tent on the top of that outback and then just living out of the outback and using the rooftop tent to sleep in but we soon discovered that really wouldn't work out for us because that would limit us as to geographic locations um, we would be dictated by the weather and also temperature as well so we stopped pursuing that option a few months into our research and so I believe it was May or June of 2017 I saw an ad pop up on Facebook I was a member and still am a member of a lot, a lot of van groups on Facebook and somebody posted their van that they had converted themselves for sale and so I sent an email to the seller of the van and arranged the time to go look at the van. So April and I traveled up to the North Shore of Massachusetts just a couple hours away from us and spent a few hours with the seller and his fiance and really fell in love with the van. It was a 2011 Ford E350 cargo van and it was low top and he did all the customization himself and it was a beautiful work of art that you could truly tell that he poured his passion and his heart into. And when describing how he customized the van, he said the only power tool that he used was a drill. All the other things were done by saw and uh, his, just his hands. We really loved the van. We took it on lots of weekend trips up to New Hampshire and Maine and Vermont, and it was a lot of fun. We would take it on extended camping trips in 
the summer and the winter and it was really a great opportunity to try out things like winter camping which is something that we just didn't have any experience doing and it also gave us a chance to try out some more winter sports and to be able to go to more far-flung wintry places and for example snowshoe. So having the van was a ton of fun. We actually had it as, as our only vehicle so we would also use it for trips to Costco and the like. What we discovered was it was actually kind of a problem to not be able to fully stand up. Neither of us is very, very tall. I'm only five feet two. Devin is five feet seven, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so we aren't really, really tall people, but we, we actually found that the idea of taking that vehicle on the road full time wasn't really feasible due to the fact that, that it was a low top van. Now I do know that lots of people live full time with, with low top vans and of course that's perfectly fine if that, if that works for you, but we found that with the two of us it was just not feasible and that our relationship would really suffer <laughs> if, if we wouldn't be if we couldn't stand up. So we decided to sell the van and start thinking about some other types of vehicles that we could potentially con convert instead. So with all that being said, we decided to sell the van and it sold within one week. We had four buyers and it was crazy how, how quickly it, it sold. And it was really fun. It was a great experience meeting all the different buyers and we ended up selling it to um, the perfect person, this gentleman from New Hampshire who was teaching survival courses. And so for him, this was a perfect vehicle to be able to sleep in when he wasn't teaching. So that actually worked out really well. And from there, we decided to think about what type of vehicle to convert instead. Again, we looked at vans, we started thinking about school buses, and, and then Devin came up with the idea of converting an ambulance. We started looking at ambulances on various sites such as eBay and Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. And we actually discovered that there were quite a few ambulances for sale that would probably suit our needs and the first ambulance that we looked at was actually this ambulance that we're in right now it was january of 2018 and the seller was located up in new hampshire so we went to go look at the ambulance and unfortunately the seller could not get the vehicle to start because as some of you may know with diesel vehicles, sometimes they're very problematic in starting in colder temperatures because the diesel fuel has a tendency of gelling up when it's below freezing for an extended period of time. And that is why there are anti-gel additives that have been manufactured that you can put into your fuel tank so that the diesel fuel won't gel up. And we use those quite often when we're in colder temperatures. So we decided to pass on that ambulance and our search continued. Fast forward to, I believe it was the, the end of May, beginning of June, I contacted the seller again because we had test drove a few ambulances uh, in the previous months and those just were not the right vehicle for us and so upon contacting the seller again lo and behold the ambulance was still available and that was extremely surprising what had happened was the previous buyer his financing did not work out and so this really worked out in our favor so we ended up purchasing this ambulance and we found a parking spot in Arlington, the town that we were living in at the time. We lived in a five floor apartment building and so we could not park the ambulance in the parking lot behind our building because the vehicle was just slightly too large to fit in that parking lot and so there were various municipal parking lots in Arlington that we could park the vehicle. And so we found a great uh, parking 
lot which was not too far away from us that we could safely park the vehicle and that it wouldn't draw a lot of unnecessary attention from the residents of the town that we were living in and so we spent uh, that rest of the summer really working a lot on the vehicle we went to home depot a lot of times and on the weekends because as we were working full time we didn't have that much time during the week to work on the vehicle so we were going to go to home depot every every weekend and work as much as we could when devin first mentioned the idea of getting an ambulance i definitely felt kind of weary about the idea of buying and converting a medical vehicle. It definitely seemed like a vehicle that may have a lot of bacteria in it or may just be disgusting or um, something. <laughs> I don't know. Not only was I amazed at how clean and well maintained the ambulance was, but when I, when I started looking around, I could really see the possibilities for building out a bed and a countertop and changing out the cabinet doors to wood and various other modifications that would make it into a really lovely space. The other thing that I was a little bit worried about was finding a place to actually work on it. In our case, not only did we not have any tools, but we didn't really have a designated place to work on it because we lived in a really urban area without a lot of extra space. So what we found was that working at Home Depot was a great way to have a spot to work for, for the entire day. What we would do is we would go to the Home Depot that was about maybe about a 10 minute drive from where we lived. We would pull into the parking lot and we would park there for the entire day. We would just walk into the Home Depot and buy what, whatever we needed and, and just spend you know, six or seven hours working on it. And that actually worked out extremely well. There were some times when I was worried that maybe a Home Depot employee would ask us to leave, but we actually never had any problems. So just in case you're thinking about building out a vehicle, but you don't have a space to actually work on it, working at Home Depot works out very, very well. While we were designing the ambulance, one of the things on the top of our list was the power options for the ambulance. So there's a few things that we were considering. Number one was an all-in-one solar generator, like a Goal Zero or a Kodiak unit to put into the ambulance. Or we could design our own solar system with uh, components that we just wired together, getting solar panels for the roof and the batteries. And through extensive research and with my background in IT, I was really leaning towards doing the solar ourselves. So we, we used resources like um, this gentleman by the name of Nate, he runs a website called Explorers Life, and he and his wife has, have also put out a lot of YouTube videos on how they converted a Sprinter van into their full-time home. And he also diagrammed his entire system and linked all those components up to Amazon. And so we use that to design our system. So we have 800 watts of solar on the roof and 300 amp hours of battle-borne lithium batteries. And that's worked extremely well for us. And so we took uh, an entire day and installed the solar panels on the top of our ambulance. And then on the Saturday at Home Depot, we took about nine hours to design and lay out and install the components for the electrical system, which you'll be able to see in our rig tour when we come up with that soon. And this system has worked out extremely well for us these past nine months living on the road. We have had no concerns for power at all. 
and while we were actually working at the beet harvest in Minnesota, we had 11 straight days of overcast weather, and probably about 90% of the time it was raining out, and our battery bank got down to about 20%, and there was really no um, skipping a beat with our power system. So as we said earlier, we left in July of 2019. A few months before that, we slowly started to downsize our apartment. Most of the, the furniture and the things that we had gotten for our apartment came from Craigslist and Facebook, and most of those items were free. So we really didn't have that strong of an attachment to those things, so we just gave them away again on Craigslist and Facebook, and it was uh, kind of, kind of a, a long process for us. So we did it gradually over a few months, and so that we could really decide what we needed and what we would like to, to give up and give to give to other people. But those last two weeks in between leaving our jobs and then heading out in the ambulance were kind of frenetic and it was a frenzy of activity to, to say the least. We had to um, trim down our mattress, the mattress that we use in the ambulance that we slept on for a number of years in our two different apartments and we really love that mattress so we spent time trimming down that mattress and installing it in the ambulance and just um, getting the apartment clean and ready to vacate it took um, it took a lot of time to be able to do that and uh, just the logistical aspects of moving into the ambulance uh, it was a lot busier than we anticipated it would be. So then, after, after all that work, <laughs> installing the solar and building a bed and completely transforming the space into a cozy, tiny house, we hit the road on July 28th of 2019. And it was a wonderful day. We had spent the entire day cleaning our uh, apartment and giving back the keys and doing all these logistical things. It was a really long day, but we were so thrilled to finally hit the road. Once we moved into the ambulance and headed down on the road, we knew what we were doing was exactly the right thing for us and the exact right time to be doing it. And these last nine months have just been really really wonderful for us. We've definitely had our ups and downs on the road. We've had problems that we've had to tackle and then overcome and this has definitely not been an easy time but it's been extremely beneficial uh, for both of us and beneficial meeting uh, people on the road. I, I think, I believe that we've met people on the road that we normally would not have met having stayed in Boston. It's a, expanded our, our ways of thinking and um, created an atmosphere to be open uh, to different ways of life and to encountering um, different lifestyles as well. We're, we're living a, an extremely different lifestyle than we have been living in an apartment in Arlington. For, I think that for us, one of the unexpected benefits from living this way is that it's really caused our relationship to, to grow leaps and bounds. We've been married right now for about five years, and for the last nine months, we've, we've had to work as a team throughout many, many different um, circumstances. Everything from finding a job to getting stuck in the snow and getting out of, out of the snow to find, you know, finding a mechanic to get our rig fixed 
and just lots of other um, circumstances that, that have come our, our way. And it's just been a really great learning and growing e experience thus far. And for anybody that's considering this lifestyle or even that has a dream of embarking on this lifestyle, I would say definitely explore, explore those things and do your research. There's a ton of blogs and a ton of YouTube videos um, from people who are living this lifestyle, people who have, who have just started and for people who have been doing it for many years. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey and stay tuned for um, what happens next. So thanks a lot folks. Well, thanks so much and have a great evening. Bye now. Bye. -bye.